Hello. Good to see you all. God bless you all. God be with you. And uh, today, the theme is Okay, the theme is how we can delight in God and delight in serving God. So um, today we talk about how we ourselves can enjoy God, delight in God, and also delight in serving God. And also we can help people to delight in God and delight in serving God. So, so uh, that's very important that we enjoy the relationship with God so we can have strength from God. Okay, so uh, this is an important theme. And uh, so it includes many concepts that I have talked about that uh, includes concepts of knowing God has promised many good things. He has promised blessings to us and he promised to, to be blessing us. So that's what he has promised to do. And uh, so we base, you know, how we can have delight in God because we know that he for sure will uh, do work according to his promises that he continue he has promised to continue to bless us okay so um, okay um, so we will talk about how So the theme is how we can delight in God and delight in serving God so that we all, you know, we see the good things of God. We see the promises of God. We know that when we love Him and serve Him and delight in God, God for sure, uh, God will continue to bless us. Okay, God bless you all. Okay, now we um, now first we'll talk about the wonderful natures of God. That God is wonderful. Uh, that God is full of uh, His nature is wonderful. And here I list the wonderful nature of God. So we delight in God because of His wonderful nature. He's a loving God. He's full of love. He's holy. So in heaven there is no more sin, no more problems. So heaven is very beautiful because there is no more problem there. And also there is justice. Um, oh, 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 okay. Okay, God bless you all, and I, I'm sorry, I, um, let me see, I, I just started now, I'm sorry, I, um, made a mistake, um, okay, I will restart now, um, I will start now uh, in uh, Pastor Yip, the account of Pastor Yip. Okay. Okay, um, the theme today the theme today is how we can delight in God and delight in serving God. So how we can enjoy God, how we can see the good natures of God and we enjoy it and see the grace of God and enjoy it. So we delight in God and then we have strength from God and then we are motivated to serve God. So that's something uh, we need to learn and, and it's, I hope that this will stay in your mind, that we really believe that God is very happy with us whenever we serve Him, 
whenever we love Him, whenever we obey Him, God is very, very happy. So we can delight in God and, and uh, in the relationship with God and delight in serving God. Okay, now here I first talk about the wonderful nature of God. Uh, the nature is His inequality, the inequality of God. That the inequality of God is full of goodness. He is a God of love. He is holy. Uh, so in heaven there is no more sin. And so everyone is very nice, full of love and full of joy, uh, full of goodness. So holiness is beautiful. On earth there are all kinds of problems because there is no perfect holiness on earth. But in heaven there is perfect holiness everywhere. And justice is fair. God is always fair. Now the world is not fair, but God is fair and He's full of compassion. He cares about us. He, he knows our suffering. And He cares for people. He cares for people. He, he, uh, he has a strong concern for people. He, he has the ability to understand all people. He can understand us very well. And He accepts people. He accepts us as we are. He accepts us as we are. He desires to bless people. He wants to bless people. He has this desire and He's able to transform people. So when a person believes in Jesus, let Jesus come into his life, his life is transformed immediately. And He's a prosperous God. He has all the blessings. And He's a generous God. He's willing to give you us all kinds of blessings and he owns all resources and blessings all resources and all blessings are in his hand and he is almighty he has all the power needed to do everything he's omnipresent he's present everywhere he's all-knowing he knows everything he has foreknowledge of everything he knows ahead of time what is going to happen he is perfect in every area he is able to control everything, everything in the world, even though there are a lot of sins, but God is in control of everything. Now you might say, well, then why doesn't God take away evil in the world? Well, that will happen in heaven. On earth here, because sin has already entered the world, that there is no perfection. There is always sin. And, but He will accomplish His purpose in, uh, in the world. And He owns all authority. All authority uh, belongs to Him. And He has perfect wisdom. He has creativity. He has you know, good ideas in creation. Like uh, He created many beautiful birds, many beautiful animals, many beautiful flowers, butterflies. And He created our body very perfect. He created uh, the scenery uh, in many places. Uh, to be very beautiful. Actually, at the beginning, everywhere in the world is beautiful. It's just now after, the, uh, after sin entered the world, then the world is not, uh, you know, is not beautiful anymore in some places. But it's still beautiful in many places. And he is selfless. That means he really put down himself in order to bless other people. He's self-giving. He wants to give himself and give a lot of good things to other people. He's able to plan and manage everything. He can plan everything. Now these are some of the good nature of God. So have you met someone like that? Have you met someone so good in his nature? We can never meet someone like that in heaven. But God is full of goodness and He is perfect in every way. So it's, it's wonderful to have a God like that. Now this is His nature. And then God's grace for us, that is what He does for us, to bless us. That is, the God's grace is what God does to accept us, to love us, bless us, help us, strengthen us, reward us. So He, he can accept us, He loves us, He wants to bless us, us, and when we follow Him, He'll bless us all the time and help us. He strengthens us and rewards us. And God's grace includes His salvation. He saves us and gives us eternal life. He loves us. Now, this is His action. God's grace is His action toward us. The blessings He gives to us. He accepts us. He has a wonderful plan in our lives. When we 
Offer a body as a living sacrifice and do not be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewal of the mind, then we can enter this perfect plan. Then we start to enter this perfect plan. The more we follow His will, the more we enter this perfect plan. And He draw us to believe in Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit so and God's Word. So the Holy Spirit and God's Word draw us to believe in Jesus. So He does this wonderful work to draw us to believe in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit continues to work in our lives. He continues to change our life. He continues to protect us. He prepares wonderful things in all areas of our life to bless us. So He has wonderful things in our lives. He prepares wonderful things so that our life will be blessed. And He provides for us. And He raises our lives to a higher level. When we love Him and trust Him, then He raises our life to a high level. He trains our life so that we have ability to serve God. And He provides opportunity for us to serve Him. He gives us the opportunities and, to, and to serve Him and to bless others. And he remembers He remembers our good deeds. And He rewards us, everything we do for Him and He gives us heaven, and so on. There are so many things He does for, uh, for us uh, to bless us. These are His, His grace, okay? So His nature is wonderful. God is so good in every area. He is perfect in every area. He has all the ability in every area, and He wants to bless us. And God's grace is that He is blessing us. He is blessing all those who trust in Him and follow Him and obey Him. So when we trust in Him, He will for sure bless us. And so I hope that we can say, yes, I delight in God. I am happy because of God. I, I rejoice in God. Okay, so now we go through some Bible verses that talk about the nature and God's grace so that we are impressed with God's goodness, so that we really like God. You know, I tell you, I really like God. I really delight in God. I'm very happy with God. I... Uh, I'm so happy I have God. I'm so happy that He is blessing us, you know, blessing you also. When you trust in God, He will continue to bless you. Your life will be blessed by God and He will raise you up to a higher level so that you can bless more people. So God is a good God. So when I look at all the goodness of God, I say, it's so wonderful to have God. I like you. I like God. I enjoy God. I enjoy praying to God. I enjoy serving God. I enjoy praying to God. I enjoy everything about God. So I hope you all enjoy God. Then we can have a good relationship with Him. And then He He's very happy whenever we have a good relationship with Him. So this, uh, my message today, and also I will have the training at the same time, to help us teach this teaching, how we can delight in God from many Bible verses and also from our own experience, how we can see God's work in our lives. Okay, now Psalm 33, 5, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. So from the earth, from the food and nature, the scenery uh, and all the good things in the world and then you know, our body is created wonderfully, and also uh, animals are created wonderfully, and also, you know, people and many animals have feelings. So people and f animals have, and dogs and cats, and even some people even have friends, uh, 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 as you know, have lions as their friends, uh, even have elephants as their friends, have some birds as their friends, that they, these animals will like them very much. So. The world is full of goodness. And when we taste the food, we say, this is wonderful. It is uh, delicious and it's good for our health. Our food is good for our health. So we say, wow, God is so good. Everything you prepare for us is good. So whenever we eat or drink or look at the scenery, we say, God, you're so wonderful. Whenever we look at the field where we are farming, we'll say, wow, God, you are so wonderful. Everything you created is so wonderful. So that way we can delight in God. Everything that we see is wonderful. And also our body is fearfully. 
that David said, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. That our body is fearfully. That means when we see the wonder of our body, we really honor God. We really respect God. We will say, God, I honor you. I fear you in a sense that I respect you. I respect you because you have created our body so wonderful. You are a you are almighty God. And you have created our body so wonderful. So it's our body is wonderful. That is full of all kinds of wonderful design. So marvelous are your works. All your works are marvelous. Okay, here I show you some pictures of our body. First, the eye. The eye is beautiful creation because, you know, uh, some people say, well, the uh, evolution, they say, uh, the body just came by itself. But think about this. The eye is the only part of our body that is transparent. No part of our body is transparent. Even the blood is not transparent. The fluid in our body is not transparent. But our eye is the only part, the inner part of the eye is totally transparent. That we can see things clearly. That there is nothing blocking our, our sight. That when we look at something, it's very clear. And at the same time, it's surrounded by a, uh, the, the white part of our eye that is, you know, the, uh, when you look at the eye, the white part of our eye is totally light proof. No light can go through. And that is why we can see clearly. If light can go through there, then we won't be able to see clearly. From this, we already see a perfect design. And also we have a lens in front of our eye to so the light can focus at the back of the eye and then on the back of the eyes we have many sense cells that can read the light and send it to the brain and uh, and then uh, make it a picture now it, it's very wonderful that you know the right eye uh, and the left eye are sent to the message are sent to four different parts of the brain the right side of the right eye the left side of the right eye are sent in two, two, different, uh, four, two different locations. And then the left eye, the right side and the left side, the sight are sent to uh, two other locations. And then the brain will combine all these four locations and make a, uh, a, a, a complete picture that it's also so wonderfully created. And our brain, it has many, many nerves connected to our body that it can read the messages from all over the body and then send messages to the whole body to take care of the body. It's, you know, there's so many wires, nerves in the brain. If, you, if we have physical wires, it will have to take up many music halls to contain the number of wires in our brain. And then our ear. You know, first it can hear, and it has uh, here a drum, an eardrum here that is very uh, sensitive to any kind of sound. There is no part of the body that is so sensitive to sound. And then it has, uh, now it's kind of hard to see here, and then it has three little bones that transmit the sound to a cochlea. It look, look like the shell. Uh, the shell of a uh, you know um, a shell animal or like a um, snail, the shell, and inside the shell there are rows of this uh, ear hair. They are very fine, and then it will pick up the sound from very low frequency to very high frequency. All this is full of design. And then it has also a balance equipment right here that three semicircular circles that these three semicircles when we move it will tell us that whether we are standing up or lying down or upside down it will tell us and also it has many nerves connected to our brain this is also wonderfully created and now some people listen to loud music all the time and then this hair uh, the hearing hair will, some of them will get off, will be uh, blown off by the sound, by the loud sign, uh, by the loud s sound. So we don't hear 
you know, try not to hear loud music all the time. We don't have to play music very loudly. That will protect our our uh, ear. And also we have this DNA. The DNA is very wonderfully made. The DNA contains so much information that you know it takes many libraries to contain the the information in our uh, DNA, our uh, our genes it has a very a delicate and yet a very good memory of our whole body so that's why the body can grow up to be like us because we have the genes inside us and this is also wonderful and then when scientists look at all these wonderful parts of the body they say you know many scientists say that cannot come from evolution it cannot come by chance it has to be created by a creator for instance, you look at a camera, you say for sure a camera has to be made by someone. It cannot come by itself. And our eye, our eyes are more complicated than any camera. Our brain is more complicated than any computer. And our ear is more complicated than any recorder. And our whole body, look at this person playing badminton, that the whole body can coordinate so well because God created our body so wonderful. So we say, God, you're so wonderful. Everything you created is wonderful. I like the body you created. And also when we look at, you know, that a human and many animals have feelings, have emotions, that, you know, when people, uh, there are many people who have good relationship with the dogs, the cats, the animals, the farm animals. They love people. When we have, you know, when we are nice to them, they love us. And even birds, the wild birds, if we feed them, we are nice to them, they will come to us. And so we can see that uh, the animals have feelings. You know, some people raise up uh, lions, tigers when they were young, and then, uh, and these animals become their friends. So that's how God is. God is so wonderful. So we say, God, you're so wonderful. I adore you. I like the body you created. So I hope we all like the, the body we, God created and like the food he created. His food is so wonderful. You know, it's only man-made food when p people process the food that they add in something that is not healthy. But when we eat natural food, it's all very healthy and good for us. So we say, I thank God. Now, if we look at these verses, how can we uh, preach a message about this? Now, I've talked about preaching the message. Now, I won't go through the whole message, but I'll go through a part of it. Here, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Then we can say, you know, many people don't appreciate food or appreciate the sceneries of the world and uh, God's nature is he's full of creativity he's full of beauty and he can create things so wonderful the food is so wonderful and then why don't people you know s uh, appreciate God for his creation because people don't don't think that you know they think that they deserve all the food and everything to be perfect they don't realize that all these are gifts from God. So when we realize that these are all gifts from God, then we will appreciate God. And then how? How we can appreciate the food and the beautiful things God created in the world. When we look at everything, we say, wow, the food here, like the food here, it's, they all have the different taste. They all have the different nature. And they ha all have the different uh, vitamins that are good to our body. We say, God, you're so wonderful. So we count the blessings. And then we'll say, God, I, I really like everything you do. I really enjoy everything you created. Everything you created is so wonderful. And in heaven, the Bible says that there is, you know, the tree that has fruit every month of the year. And there are many people who went to heaven and came back and they said they ate the fruit there. It's so tasty, so delicious compared to the food on earth here. 
So we say, wow, God, you're so wonderful. It's only on earth here that things are not perfect now, but in heaven, things will be perfect. And then for the creation of the body, we can preach a mess message about, you know, some people don't appreciate the body and they abuse the body. They don't take good care of the body and they don't thank God for the bodies. And then the wonderful nature and grace of God. Remember, we talk about uh, the message outline. First, we have bad examples and good examples of people who uh, uh, who follow this nature, God's nature or grace, and then God's nature and grace, and then why don't people uh, they appreciate God's nature and grace, and then how how we can live out this nature. So when we look at this, you know, um, first there are many people who don't appreciate the body and then they abuse the body by drinking alcohol or they don't have a regular sleep and they don't have a joy in the Lord. They don't have a good relationship with the Lord, so they don't have joy. When they don't have joy, then they don't have a healthy body. And then uh, God's nature. God's nature is His inequality. God is full of creativity. He is full of beauty. He is very scientific. So everything He created is perfect. You know, when people look at the body that God created, they say everything is perfect. They just take it for granted. They say, well, evolution just happens that everything is perfect. You know, it doesn't happen like that. Things are so perfect. You know, um, some people say that you know, the eye just came by itself. Think about it. Is it possible that the eye come from evolution? Now, if it comes by evolution, the eye cannot see until it's fully evolved. And before it's fully evolved, it's just a ball there that doesn't, cannot see, but everything is put in the right place. The lens is put in the right place, and then the the gel inside the eye is put in the right place and then the, uh, the nerve cells at the back is put in the right place and the nerve cells is connected to the brain and also the bone around the eye is all in the right place to surround the eye and there are many elements too because our eye can focus because the lens is connected to a lot of tendons on the, all sides of the, of the eye and pull it so that we can focus uh, to the close, uh, things that are closer by or focus to things that are far away. All these are wonderfully designed that the, the, all the tendon are put in the right place or ligament. Okay, and the ear, now if you just have an outer ear, you cannot hear. If you have the inner ear but it's sealed on the outside, we cannot hear. But it has a uh, tube that can connect, that can convey the sound to the to the uh, eardrum. That is, you know, just in the right place there is the canal. And then in the right place there is the eardrum that is sensitive to sound. And then there are the three little bones, the tiniest little bones in the body that can pick up the, the vibration. And, and the last one is the hammer that hit on the cochlea that conveys the sound to all these little uh, hair cells that is sensitive to sound. And all this, you know, if uh, we don't have this eardrum, we're gonna hear, and then if the three bones are not right next to the, the eardrum, then we cannot pick up the sound. And then if the three bones is not connected to the cochlea, we cannot hear, even with all the fine hairs inside. And then even it has the hammer and no hair cells in the inside, then we cannot hear. And then even if we have the hair cell, but it doesn't have the nerves that con convey the sound to the ner brain, and the brain can interpret the sound the, because the signal is transmitted by electricity. And if the brain cannot interpret the electricity, it cannot, you know, we cannot hear. But all these are put in the right place, one next to another. So one place, one thing, like you look at uh, the 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 ear lobe on the outside and then an ear tube. You know, next to it has to have the eardrum. Next to it has to have the three 
three uh, bones. And next to it has to have the cochlea, and the cochlea has ha cochlea is, has hard shell, but on the place where the hammer hit it, it has a soft membrane, so it can hit inside, and uh, and then there is all these uh, hair cells inside. So all these are created very wonderfully in a very scientific way. The scientists they just try to discover the creation of God. The scientists just discover, and they when they discover uh, the uh, the structure of the body and all the cells and all the uh, inner small parts of the cell, they they are amazed. They are amazed. God is so uh, creative. He's so scientific. He's so loving. So everything He created is wonderful, and everything is perfect for us. And it serves our, uh, you know, all the our needs. We need to hear. We need to see. We need to think. We need to feel. Uh, we need to sense uh, what is happening around us. We need uh, the vertebrae and the bones to hold our body. And we need all the organs. And we need all the hormones, all the digestive juice, and all the function of the body is so put. In the right place, and we say, "God, I really thank you. I really thank you." So I, I hope we all say, "God is so wonderful," even though we have, we all have shortcomings. We all have things we need, but we always have things that we already own. We say, "God, you're so wonderful." We have owned so many things. You have given us so many things. It's so wonderful. That you have given us so many things, so I want to thank God for everything, and uh, so this is the wonderful nature and the grace of God. The grace of God is that He created a body so wonderful that we can enjoy life, that we can function so well. Okay, and then why don't people appreciate uh, the body of? Uh, the the body that created because they just don't honor God, and then the destructiveness when they don't appreciate the um, you know the warning. If people don't appreciate the body, then they ruin the body and then they will suffer. Okay, how can we appreciate the wonderful creation of God? That the body is so wonderful. When we look at every little function of our body, our hands, we have. The four fingers and then the thumb. If we don't have the thumb and just four, five fingers like this, then it's hard to hold things. But we have the thumb, and it makes it make it easy for us to hold things when we have the thumb. And we thank God. We don't just have we don't just have five fingers. We have four fingers and the thumb. We have the fingernail to protect our finger, and. You know everything we have is so wonderful. So we look at a whole body, that we have the mouth to eat, and the mouth to talk and to sing, and then we also have the tongue to taste the food and the saliva, to uh, start to digest the food and also lubricate the food, and then uh, we have the stomach and the intestines to. Digest the food to absorb all the nutrients in the food, so that it uh, it's healthy for our body. So it's good for our body. So when we look at all these things, and we can hear music, and we can sing, and we can create songs, we can write songs. We say thank God. We have the ability to write songs. We have the ability to sing. We have ability to sing praises to God. And the ability to enjoy music, and we can have the ability to see things and enjoy the beautiful nature, and we thank God for everything God has created, and then we say, God, you're so wonderful, and you create all this because you want to raise us up to a high level. You want to use our life mightily. You want to bless our whole life. So we, whenever we look at anything we have, we say, God, you are so. Very, very wonderful.